Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring into the video. We're going to be talking about graphics cards. There's been an awful lot of news of the RX 480, so this time we also have some NVIDIA GTX 1060 news. And in fact, just to spice things up, we're going to start with the 1060 news. Normally, as you know, we start alphabetically with news, but at least I do when it comes to tech news. But today I've decided to do things a bit differently and do NVIDIA first, just to once again spice up the order a little. So, the GTX 1060 is supposedly going to be hitting the market shortly after the RX 480. Now, if you're going to question me on the timing of shortly, unfortunately that is a bit of a mystery. Shortly could be anything from a month, maybe month and a half, to a couple of weeks. There is no real firm date. But what we can see, courtesy of Reddit, is a rather sexy looking design. It looks very reminiscent of the standard, bog standard, might I add, um, GTX 1070 and 1080 reference cooler. But there are a couple of subtle differences, primarily the absence of the translucent window. Now, personally, I don't mind this too much. I still think it looks quite a high-quality looking uh, design. And honestly, if it saves a couple of bucks, I'm good with that. In fact, those with eagle eyes might even say to themselves, hmm, those fans look awfully familiar, and they do look very much similar to the GTX 1080 and 1070. So we should theoretically get a fairly good cooler on the card and potentially this means some pretty good overclocking. Now performance is a bit of a mystery unfortunately with card. We do have some rumoured specifications. We can make a very educated guess that it's going to be a GP106 based core and this means most likely judging from the past history of Nvidia and also most likely the performance targets that Nvidia are going to be aiming for. Let's face it from the rumors, leaks and information regarding the RX 480 they can't cut too many CUDA cores because they're going to be shooting themselves in the foot and they also can't go too many CUDA cores because they're also going to be cutting into their own market with the GTX 1070. Therefore we can assume somewhere around the 1280 CUDA cores maybe slightly more is going to be um, what NVIDIA are aiming for. Now, what we do know, uh, according to Benchlife, there are going to be two models. Now, these models are going to have a couple of primary differences. Uh, the main one going to be memory. Now, one is going to have 3 gigabytes, which is the GP106-300, and the GP106-400 is going to have 6 gigabytes. Now, you might say to yourself, well, is there any other differences? For example, are there going to be additional CUDA cores? Is there going to be additional clock speeds? Is there, for example, the 6 gigabytes going to have maybe slightly higher memory bandwidth, maybe a wider bus or whatever? Unfortunately, your guess is as good as mine. Early rumors did report that we've got 6 gigabytes of GDDR5, not GDDR5X, which isn't uh, thoroughly surprising at all. And that's with a 192-bit memory bus, which makes an awful lot of sense. Now, as you can probably guess from the tone of my voice in the video itself, the 1060, and this is going to probably shock you, is going to compete with the 480. Now, if you don't have a vested interest in the ecosystems, just to clarify what I mean by that, I mean you don't have a free sync or a G-Sync monitor, you don't have a particular application which requires one of the cards for whatever purpose, then really the most logical reason to upgrade would to one of the two would be price versus performance, which honestly, from my point of view, is always the best reason to buy any piece of hardware. So what is going to be rather interesting is how the RX 480 performs and then what happens with the GTX 1060? There are a couple of theories one could go down with this route. One is that the RX 480 could be released and then a couple of driver revisions could pop out which would slightly improve the performance. Or Nvidia could just be waiting, waiting I tell ye, to see what the RX 480 really does in the wild and then they might decide to up the clocks a little um, but, of course, at the end of the day, we can only guess. 
Speaking of the RX 480, some leaks regarding the performance of the car have emerged a little bit before the GPU is on shelves. Now the performance of the RX 480 have been spilled, well, at least some of the performance of the RX 480 has been spilled thanks to a Polish magazine and it's called CD Action and there are a couple of titles on the um, on display Metro Last Light Redux which are free and World of Tanks now I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation so all I can tell you is from Google Translate that Bardzo um, anything that's labelled Bardzo hopefully I'm pronouncing that right probably not um, that basically means the highest settings, the higher settings, whereas Slorendi, or however you pronounce it, I'm sorry, is medium details. Now, there are a couple of things which make us say, hmm. The first is there are no driver revisions mentioned, and the reason I keep bringing that up is because we don't know when these cards were tested. For example, they could have been tested a day or so ago, or they could have been tested two weeks ago. We just do not know this. And the reason that's really important is because we don't know whether they were using even a close to a retail driver. What is interesting, though, is that the Zotac GTX 970 that they're using to test is overclocked. And these actually make a very compelling case when compared with Chip Hell, who have leaked also some uh, benchmarks. Now, the interesting thing with Chip Hells is they show the cards once again up against the GTX 970 Zotac, which has got a fairly hefty overclock. For reference, that overclock roughly puts it on par with the GTX 980. Obviously, there are some differences based upon the game that's running and all of that stuff, but what we can see for lack of any further analysis is that the card is basically going to perform roughly at the levels we'd expected. It's going to be roughly the GTX 970, 980 in levels of performance at stock. What happens when it's overclocked? Your guess is as good as mine. Now, I have mentioned this before and I'll quickly go over it one more time for folks who maybe missed my earlier videos. Basically, the reference callers are going to be at launch, and then over the next month or so, uh, maybe month and a half, depending on the Pascal, ver um, I'm sorry, the Polaris version you're getting, whether it's the 480, the 470, or the 460, the third-party callers are going to come in. Now, some companies are putting backplates, for example, XFX, to their base cards, to the standard retail cards. And it's up to you whether you're going to want to buy those because they may come with a higher price premium. Now, from what I'm reading, the standard overclock of these cards is around 1350 to 1400 megahertz. There are some samples which go to <coughs> 15, 1600 megahertz. But how those individuals have got 15 to 1600 megahertz, we don't know. All we've seen is a couple of images showing 1600 megahertz. So for all we know, they've you know gone into the Batman universe, come out with Mr. Freeze's ray gun, and decided to shoot the card as the damn thing's running. All we can do is make some speculations on that one. Now, I'm going to finally close the video because, obviously, we should theoretically have a whole bunch of real benchmarks. And by real benchmarks, I mean like a load of websites, just by quickly going over a couple of final statements. Now, if you are unsure what to do, and this is my personal opinion, so you don't have to take a lick of notice with this, my personal opinion, if you are unsure what to do when you read the benchmarks tomorrow or whenever they come out and you say to yourself, gee, eh, still unsure whether I should buy the 1080, I'm sorry, the RX 480, or whether I should get with the Force, the 1070, or whether I should buy the 1060, whether I should wait for the custom cooler, my personal, I, my personal suggestion would be just to wait. The reason behind that is it's not going to hurt you any. Unless you're really desperate for a card, if you've got a fairly okay-ish card at the moment, let's say for the sake of argument, you've got a 9... 
50 or maybe you've got like a 760 something like that then you're probably okay for a while to you know hold off on an upgrade on the other hand if you're good to wait for a couple of months or maybe a month then you'll probably have a much better understanding of what's going on what the custom coolers are like do they make any real difference in the real world what type of clock speeds are people getting on average with the card because there are some folks who are saying that they are firmly restrained in which case better coolers might make a difference the reference coolers from what i'm reading do an okay job with standard clocks with standard voltages but if you start putting in uh, the equivalent of like a nuclear power station into the damn thing then you obviously you're going to start running into a bit of thermal issue so my personal suggestion is if you're not sure what to do wait a couple of weeks wait for the retail um, chain to become pretty full wait for people to get them wait for the custom coolers and then maybe the, we'll know if the 1060 is coming out at a specific date and then you can make your decision if not and you're just like eh, I need a card now at the price that you're going to be paying for this damn thing let's say 200 to 230 ish US dollars let's face it it's not really the end of the world if it turns out that another card comes along in let's say a month's time and it happens to be like 5 or 10% faster. It's a pretty damn good GPU. And as for the GTX 1060, I'm hoping that it's very competitive. And it's going to be really interesting if that card is highly overclockable. And what NVIDIA are going to do regarding voltage control when AMD have basically said, yeah, you can pretty much run whatever the hell you want with it, at least according to what I'm reading. So if NVIDIA are happy to let you do that, and given the insane overclocks of the GTX 1080 and the 1070, if the 1060 allows you to do very similar things, well, I think you can probably guess where I'm going with this. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.